Have you just started to learn Grid or you've been trying to learn it for a little while now and you just get bogged down in it because there's there's a lot of complexity with it, right? There's all these new properties, there's new values, there's even new units and it can just seem like a little bit much and maybe you already have some experience with Flexbox, that always seems to get the job done for you, so why even bother with Grid? Well, Grid can do things that Flexbox can't, first of all. And actually, I think if you simplify Grid down and start using it in very simple ways, it can actually be easier to use and learn than Flexbox can. And that's why I want to look at how we can simplify Grid and look at the easy ways to get working with it. And we're going to be doing that in this video. Hello, my friend and friends, and welcome back to yet another video. I'm so glad that you've come to join me once again. And if you're new here, my name is Kevin, and here at my channel, I hope you fall madly, deeply in love with CSS. And if not, fall in love with it. I hope to at least make you a little bit less frustrated with it. And today we're doing that by exploring a topic that is one of my favorite things to use with CSS, which is CSS Grid. In simplifying Grid, I actually think there's different ways that we can simplify it. So I'm gonna be breaking this down and we're gonna be examining this layout with two different approaches. So one of them is going to be more of like a natural starting point, I think, for Grid and just understanding the very basics of how we can simplify Grid to get the layout that we want it to make for us. And then the other approach, we're going to sort of scrap what we did and take another way that I really like to work today. And what I'd really encourage you to do is watch both of them and see which one speaks to you a little bit more. Some are more practical for some layouts, some are more practical for other layouts. But for both of them, I think they're very nice, simple ways to approach things. And none of it's going to sink in. You might watch both of them and go, they both make a lot of sense. Grid is easy and then try to use it and you might get stuck. Make sure when you're learning something like this that you're practicing it. But as much as possible, I'm trying to eliminate some properties, some things that we don't need to be using because there's so many out there for Grid. I want to focus on the ones that we do need to really understand it and on the ones that we can use to simplify our life, especially with media queries and other things. All right, so for this one, I'm actually building out this layout that you can see here, uh, which is in Figma right now, but this is from Front End Mentor and I'm doing it just because I was trying to find a nice layout that we could build uh, that would require grid and this looks pretty gritty to me. Uh, so we're gonna use this as our example, but what I've actually done is I've actually done quite a bit of work already in getting things styled, but I haven't applied anything to do with grid yet. Uh, at all. Now if you'd like to follow along the GitHub repo for this is linked down below and I've included the starting CSS so exactly what I have here and this style.css will be the finished version of it so if you want to follow along or play with what I have to start with you can do just that. And let's jump in there and here I have my testimonial grid and actually let's just go take a quick look at my uh, my markup. And so basically I have my main here which I set as my testimonial grid. And then inside my main, I just put each one of these card type things as its own article with a class of testimonial and a few other utility classes and things on there that aren't too important. But what's really important is this: these are the direct children, these articles right here. And so what I'm gonna do is come over to my style where we have my testimonial grid. And I think we know what we wanna do. I had the first thing to start with grid is we do need a display of grid. And I won't tell you how many times I've actually forgotten to do that. And when you do display grid, generally speaking, nothing will really change. And this is actually one of the things I like about grid compared to Flexbox. Flexbox will work. It gives you the columns, but sometimes those columns don't do what you want them to do. And you have to finick around a little bit and get things to, you know, it can be a little bit strange if it doesn't do exactly what you want it to early on. Uh, whereas with grid, you do display grid, generally not much changes. Sometimes if you did it and there's paragraphs, all of a sudden things might become double spaced because with grid and with flex, the direct children, so the grid items or the flex items no longer have collapsing margins. So that can be a little thing that can get in your way, but we have no margins between these. So absolutely nothing changes, but we do need some spacing between them. And this is where people will sometimes use margin to create spacing. Um, or of course we have gap and I'm going to recommend gap hundred percent of the time because we need vertical spacing and we need horizontal spacing, vertical spacing and horizontal spacing. I always get those backwards. <laughs> if you've been following for a while, you know that. Um, and because we want this spacing to all be equal everywhere, gap makes a lot of sense. But in general, with the gap property, by doing it, we don't get gaps on the outside of any elements and things like that. Like if you want to add margins through a grid system of any kind, it gets a little bit annoying, even if it's just columns going across and you don't even have rows. Um, I'd always, always, always recommend gap now. And margins, I'm using less and less and less for little spacing things. Um, so let's come in, I think it's a 1.5 rem. Maybe it's a two, that looks pretty good. So I'll stick with that. And we're started, we have a grid and we have my gap. And one of the first things I'm gonna say is if you are working with grid, make sure that you use your dev tools. So I am gonna open those 
And in my dev tools, I'm going to be bringing them off screen just so it doesn't take up too much room. But what I'm going to do, I'm in the accessibility tab. Let's go and just go to my inspector. Um, here I have this grid on here and this is a little toggle. I am in Firefox and I like Firefoxes, especially for demos because things are much bigger and easier to see. Um, we're going to be looking at our line numbers and a few other things. Chrome has all of these things too. It has the area names, it has line numbers uh, and these visualizations. So whichever browser you're in, it works almost exactly the same. Um, you can see your grid, you can change the color of it, the grid. So actually let's go to a darker color just so we can see it a bit better. Uh, maybe something like that, just wait, something that pops, or we'll red, um, but something that pops a bit on our layout. And again, you can do that Chrome or Firefox uh, and Safari actually. There's Safari's new Chrome inspector is really, really good. Um, you can even, there's some scrolling issues sometimes you might get with like overlaying grids and stuff. Um, Safari's new one is surprisingly powerful and good. That's what happens when Jen Simmons is on the team. Um, so we have display grid that's there. We can see my gaps that are coming in now and but we of course need some columns and this is the first thing I'm going to say if you are setting up a grid and you're not really comfortable with using grids one of the hardest things to know is how many columns you might need. So I'm actually going to come on here and I'm going to grab my pen tool not my pen tool my pencil tool which I don't know the shortcut of because I never use it. Um, but we're going to pull that open and I always always recommend and we can't see it because there we go. We can see it now. Figma chooses the color of it based on the background and I was drawing on the purple so it chose a white pencil. So there's like the container that I'm inside. That's my main grid. And then I clearly need to have something that goes here but that does need to come into this area here. So let's highlight that in white too. Just that line continues here. Here's the nice easy one that goes all the way down like that. But look, oh, we have another, you know, we're looking up here and you might go, I need a big one, a small one, and a small one. But don't forget over here, this gets split too. So I need to split this one across like that as well. And this is where it can really help you visualize how many rows and how many columns you actually need. Because when you're looking at a design, sometimes you miss things. And sometimes you need three rows instead of two or six rows instead of three, depending on what you need to do. Even now I get tripped up sometimes and I eventually get it if I'm not drawing on top of it. And this takes three seconds to do um, and then it just makes it a lot easier. So I know I need one, two, three, four columns. I also need to have two rows, but I'm not going to declare them. I'm going to talk more about that soon, but I'm only going to declare my columns for now. So I'm going to say grid template columns, which is how we can declare our columns because we're setting up our template. So it's the template columns that the items will live on. So grid template columns, and there's one unit. If you're new to grid, um, we'll go slowly with this. Uh, so here, I'm just gonna make this a bit bigger to give myself a bit more room um, so we can see everything I'm gonna write. And grid template columns, we have to say what they're gonna be. So you could come in here and say, I have 100 pixels, and I'm just gonna do one and hit save. And now I have one column that's 100 pixels. And then I could just put a space and do 100 pixels. And now I have two columns. And then I could say pixels and have three columns. Cool. Uh, that re that works really well. Uh, another one you could do is come in with percentages, 25%, 25 and 25%. And okay, so that's working. Too. And it might look like it's not working, but it's because it's hiding. So there we go. We have three columns going all the way across that way. And one thing we want to do is actually divide this space up equally. So one, we can, one way we can do that is with the FR unit. So one FR, and this is a new grid only, or I won't say new because it's been around for a while, but it's a grid only unit, which is like, it, it sort of uses the Flexbox algorithm from what I understand of it. And it's basically a fraction. So one fraction, one fraction, one fraction. So we're saying divide all of those up equally. Now you can do more with FRs than this, but I find most of the time you just want nice even columns. And so this is a really nice way to get it to say each one is getting an equal amount of space. There is more complexity to how this works, but we're not going to dive into that. We want to keep things simple. And almost every time you use it, that's going to be the result that you get is three equal columns. Or if you did five, you get five equal columns, so on and so forth. Now, uh, I'm going to make this guy a little bigger again, because what happens with grid is sometimes you end up doing that, where I just said five, so you end up actually putting in five. And then when you want like to change this, it's a little frustrating, or even typing it out, one FR, one FR, one FR. It's kind of annoying. Uh, and they realized a lot of the time we're going to want equal for all of them. So that's where we have the repeat function that we can use. And in repeat, you say how many times you want to repeat it, put a comma, and then say what you want to do. So let's put 100 pixels again, just so we can see that working. And so it's repeated three columns at 100 pixels. 
but of course I don't want 100 pixels. We saw that FR works, so I can just say three and one FR, and that gives me three columns that are one FR each. Except of course, I just set this to three, but just thinking back, we actually want that to be four, right? There we go. Because uh, again, why is it four? Let's go look. We have one, two, three, four columns on my layout, not three. That was a little silly of me. There we go. Uh, so we get my four columns going across and you'll notice I haven't set any rows yet. And actually four now, I'm gonna, let's bring this back to three because it looks a little nicer for the moment. <laughs> and we'll go back to four in a second. Um, and I just want to talk a little bit about setting grid template rows because I think this is one of those places where people add complexity that they don't need to add. Because notice if I say there's three columns, my content, if I have more than three, so when I have more than three children in here, like these articles, if I have more than three of them, they just go, oh, I got to the third column. There's no more columns in this. I'm gonna create a row and come down here. And this is where you might hear the terms implicit and explicit grid. So this is where I've explicitly declared three columns. So I've said there are three columns. I haven't said how many rows there are. So the grid is creating new rows for me as it needs to. And these are implicit rows because it's just going, there's content here that needs somewhere to live. I'm going to make that space automatically without you telling me to do that. And as much as with the web in general, we're so used to like items, you know, the auto height where it just grows by itself. We place new items, they stack on top of each other by default. We're very used to that idea of new things just sort of coming in and going where they should go automatically. So when I can, I try not to declare grid template rows. I will declare it when I need to, when I have very specific grids where I'm trying to do very specific things that need a bit of finicking around and a bit of finessing and a little bit of other stuff going on. But for, uh, for the most part, you can get away with grid template rows and not declaring grid template columns. And if that's the case, I strongly recommend that you do that because it just gives you a lot less overhead and a lot less to think about when you're making it just because you just have to worry about your rows and everything just sort of falls into place from there. And what I'm doing here with these explicit columns is I'm saying also how big they have to be. Whereas with those rows that it's implicitly creating or these automatically created rows, it's just doing what it needs to do. It's matching the height of the tallest one, basically. So that's a lot like how Flexbox works, right? If you do display flex, they just all match the height of the tallest item. You can change this behavior and you can get control on your auto rows or auto columns if you fall into that world but we want to keep things simple for now. So I'm not going to get into that, but it is a possibility. But let's keep things as simple as we can. So every time you're going to do a display grid, you'll probably want to set a gap on there, and then you're going to set up some columns. Then if you need to start worrying about more, but we're not going to do that. We're going to, let's fix this. We go back up to four and let's start trying to get this layout to work for us a little bit. And so let's go look back at our layout and we have this one here and this one here that need to span across two columns each. So let's go and create something that can allow us to do that. And what I really like for this type of thing, instead of trying to find like a class, a specific class that, you know, for each one of those and writing it twice, um, I'm going to come here and I'm just going to write a dot grid span two. And I could call this just, um, you know, span two, I guess, if I wanted to. I just like being really explicit. This class should be used with grid. So I start with grid. It's just sort of a, a little naming convention, but you can name it however you want. Uh, you might be saying, well, there's no other way to span. There is um, the multi-column layout that actually does have spans, and it did before uh, Grid even existed, I believe. Uh, but And it's a little bit different in how that works. But what we're going to do is say my Grid column. And even here, this I guess this could be Grid uh, call, call span 2, just in case you end up with row span 2s. So let's do that. Grid call span 2. And so my Grid column will be, you want to guess? span two. Isn't that so easy? <laughs> uh, grid column is a shorthand property and we're going to explore that a little bit more uh, shortly. But one nice thing is when you just need to throw spans on stuff, it just works. It doesn't matter that it's a shorthand. It puts it sort of where you where it should go because you could actually put the span on the start or the end. Anyway, that's going to work. I'm going to hit save. Uh, so it's here and we'll go over to my HTML. And we're gonna add that in two spots where you need it on my first one. So this is my first article, grid call span two. And if you're saying that's a long class name, it is, but that's okay. <laughs> uh, I like longer class names if they really explain to me what they're doing, that's fine. I don't want like a GCS2 or something cause then I'll never remember that and I'll never really know what it's for. Or if somebody else comes to my code, they don't know. Whereas this, it's very explicit. If somebody were to come across this, they see it, there's a grid and they see these are grid column span two. It's just super clear. So I like clear class names that explain exactly what they're doing. 
So let's hit save here and see, wow, look at that. <laughs> now there's some weird funkiness coming up over here because this one is now so long and it's mucking this up because remember they're stretching to try and match each other's heights, but that's okay. We, we've made some nice progress. Where the real issue is actually coming from is this one is in the wrong spot, but I put it there on purpose. Um, and not on purpose because of, it would actually make more sense if this was one, two, three, whoops, let's get that in black, three, four, five, right? Because then it, that would be the order I see them in here. The thing is, in this Figma design, we have a mobile layout too. And Janet is the third one. That's the third one here. I like working mobile first. We're gonna talk about the media queries in a second though. But right now we need to get this one over here or Kira over here. Uh, one or the other. And to do that, there's lots of different approaches and different ways we could do something like that. This is where, for me, utility classes don't quite work just because you're placing things in very specific spots or moving things around. Um, I just find it easier to actually target the class that I want to work on. And I could actually just give this specific one a class um, and target it. Because if I look here, the, it's all very generic, my classes. I have testimonial, the background colors and a few other things going on there, but it's all very generic classes to style this up. Um, so there's different ways of selecting it just for simplicity sake and not worrying about creating a class for it. I am going to use the nth child selector or I'll choose the last child selector, I guess, just because it's going to be faster for now. Uh, if you wanted to make this a little bit more plug and play, you could then actually give them very specific classes that could make this work. Um, but this is my test. It is a testimonial. So we're going to say testimonial last child. And because that's going to select the last child, let's say background red important just to see. There you go. We can see that it's actually selecting the one that we want it to select. So let's get rid of that. And now we can get a little bit more about placing items on the grid when they're not going where you want them to go. And this is where line numbers really come in. And I've had my grid overlay on this entire time. It's really important when you're using your grid overlay, which is change colors on me. This happens sometimes when things refresh, even though it's still set to red here, just because it makes it a bit easier to see on top of the purple. I'll change that back to red. Um, but even if you're not working with it on all the time, if you're going to touch your line numbers, I highly, highly, highly recommend that you go ahead and have this on because seeing the line numbers makes it so much easier to work with. And so I want it to be on my column four to my column five. And we want it from, let's go look actually at the Figma design. I want it to be from the top here and go all the way down to the bottom on this side. So to be able to do that, let's, let's start with the column. So we're gonna get this in the right spot. So we saw the grid column um, property before. So I'm saying, before we said span two. So let's just do that for fun. Span two, just to see that it, whoops, we need that. And it works, it goes across the two like that. But in this case, I don't wanna be doing a span two. I actually wanna say start at line number four. So we can actually just put grid column four and it will start at the line four and it leaves this one empty. Why is it doing that? What's happening? So grid column, as I mentioned, is a shorthand. And the shorthand is for grid column start and my grid column end. Um, and basically if I just do a grid column like that for, it's just putting it as a grid column start and it's not putting a grid column end just because it doesn't even need to do that. And we don't really need a grid column end. Uh, but just for fun, I could put three here and we could say that the grid, or let's do a start, grid column start is at three and grid column end is at five and we get the same idea as the span two. The reason I prefer span two when I can use it is because here the span two class is working for this one and it's working for this one over here. It doesn't matter where they are and even we're gonna end up moving this one over in a minute. And it doesn't matter where they are, where they're lining up. Span two is just saying, doesn't matter where you start, but the end, we just wanna make sure we're spanning across two columns. So this one's a little bit more versatile than locking in with specific line numbers. And just like before I said, don't create rows unless you need to create rows. Don't start using line numbers unless you need to use line numbers. Start as simple as possible and add the complexity as you need to to be able to get the layout that you need. So first display grid, then my gap, then I set up my columns, then I go, oh, I need a few of these to span. So I make a very general, generic way to span columns. I'm not saying you're going from one to three and then, oh, you're going from four to, or two to four or whatever uh, we need to get that one too. 
we actually, in this case, we can get rid of the end because I don't need to worry about that, but we need it to start at four. So we need it to be here, but I also need it to move up. I need it starting at the top. So I'm gonna come here and then this is when I'm finally gonna worry about my row. So we can do grid row and we can do start on here. And where do we want it to start? At the top, at one. Oh, oh my goodness, it's all coming together so quickly. What happened? Why, why did everything just fall into place? Again, start simple, start moving things, and all of a sudden your layout might come together more than you think. <laughs> and so by saying grid row start one, let's take this one off. We're doing, it's going in the order of the DOM. So this is the, you know what, let's choose the third one here. Um, testimonial and child three, background red important. I just want to highlight that this is my third one in my DOM. So it's one, two, three. The third one is going here because that's just following the natural flow that the items will go in. First column, second column, third column, it just goes and then it goes, oh, we're out of room. I'm gonna go down. I'm gonna go to where this guy is. And then we get that one and then it sort of moves across from there. As soon as I do grid row start one, I'm saying, I need you, uh, your grid column start is four. So you're living in this box, but I also need you to start at line number one, which is the very top. So as soon as I do that and I save that, it has to live here, which means this one can't live there. So it pushes down into the next empty cell that it can find. And it just automatically goes there. Even though this is the third one in the DOM, it's grid smart. It's going, it, and you can overlap. And actually overlapping content with grid is just, it's, it's wonderful, but it won't do it by default. You have to work at it a little bit to actually get things to overlap. So that gets pushed up. This falls down over here because that's the next empty cell that was available to it. So awesome and I guess we can turn that red off now we don't need that and the last thing is we need this to fill up all that space and you you know these are stretching they look really ugly but as soon as this is allowed to stretch it should fix that problem so how can we do that hopefully you've already come up with an idea or two where we can come in with a grid row end and there's a few options I could choose my three because remember we have one here my line number two here or and my line number three down here. So I could throw a three and then the layout is done. <laughs> or you might've said, well, I can do a span. And you're right, you could, you could say span two. And then it's gonna start at the top and span across two, exact same result. There's no difference between them. Uh, so there we go, we're spanning across the two of them that way. Uh, another option is to use the shorthand. So instead of writing all of this, when you use the shorthand, you do grid row, and then you're saying, where do you want it to start? And then where do you want it to end? So one over three, we'll start at line number one and go two to three, or you could do one over span two, and that will give you the exact same result. And you can just, in this case where you're declaring uh, a starting row using whether it's a span or whether it's something else, it doesn't matter too much. If you like the idea of this actually being a utility class, just like I did before, you could come in and create something like that, uh, a grid, row span two and do a grid grid row span two and use that in conjunction with a grid row start there's the possibility with things like that that because this is a shorthand it might actually get overridden and you can run into a little bit of finickiness so if i need to do like a specific starting line or a specific ending line or anything like that i tend to declare it on the selector where i'm working instead of using a utility class but if I don't need to declare anything specific, that's where I like the utility classes that work based on just where its natural flow is. And we're gonna to get to the media queries in one second. I just wanna recap a little bit of the simplicity of this and I've gone over it before, but first display grid, because we need it. Gap, because that makes our spacing and all our life easier there. And then set up your columns. Don't set up rows unless you have to. We didn't have to in this case, even though we did have to span multiple rows. Pretty nice and pretty neat, and I think makes things a lot easier to maintain and a lot easier to think about. We can use spans just to span columns. It doesn't matter where things are starting. And then if you need to, we can do specific things of start in this exact location or start here and end over here and different things like that. So. Always do as general as possible and as generic as possible. Simplify things as much as possible. And then when you need to get very specific, then add that specificness to your grid just to get things to fall where they need to. But a lot of the time, you don't even need stuff like this. This is 
really when you're getting into these weird layouts like this where things are sort of getting a little fancier. And next we want our media queries. So I'm gonna open up responsive mode. The shortcut is shift command M. Um, I don't know if that's probably a command shift M. I'm guessing if you're on a Mac, that is in your dev tools. Also, I get asked a lot about this. So that's this little guy, uh, not this little guy, this little guy in your dev tools. And in Chrome, this exact same icon is on this side over here. So just because I always get asked about this. And uh, I mentioned the nice thing with responsiveness in Grid. So we will do an, an extra little stage in this that wouldn't really be for this layout specifically. But let's fix this at the beginning. Um, and this is where I can actually leave everything I've done except for one thing. Um, there's a few little things we'll have to do. But I'm going to grab this Grid template columns. I'm going to remove it from here and hit save and let's see what happens. Um, we still have a layout. And what I'm going to do is come here and say at media. And we'll just say a min width of 40 M. I'm just guessing. And let's put in my testimonial grid and we're going to redefine my columns there. Uh, one thing you'll notice is even though like actually let's just remove this so we can see that we don't have anything. We actually have a bit of like the same the layouts working even though I haven't declared my columns here. Um, but the, the column spacing is gotten a little mucked up because it's going to the auto spacing. So like this one is narrower, like you can see like here we have a really narrow column here, we have a bigger column. So that's why I do like declaring them. The reason that it's just magically working is because of this grid column start. If I turn this off, the whole thing falls apart. Um, but it's going, this is my, this has to be on the fourth column. So that means I need to have four columns for this to work. And then everything will just sort of slot into those empty spaces. So that's why we sort of have a layout right now. But what we're gonna say is actually, let's put it right here, my media query. And then I'm gonna grab this and also put it inside the media query. And now we have this at my large screen sizes. And then I think we should change where that's happening at. Um, and actually I'm gonna bring this up to a 50 because it was getting a little bit narrow there. And we can see, there we go, look at that. It's going and then it's working. Except it's not really working because these are still spanning too. And uh, this would depend a little bit on your layout, but I think most of the time your spans are going to be happening once the grid is sort of more defined um, and when things are kicking in. So I'm also going to bring that utility class here. This isn't the most organized CSS at the moment, um, but just to say we want to start without any spans, without any columns, anything like that. But I'm still using my display of grid at the small screen size because then I have my gap and all my spacing is there. And actually, let's just turn off the inspector thing now. Um, so yeah, just, just for the purpose of having that gap, I think that's wonderful. And then we get to our larger screen size and then boop, we get our columns and everything falls in and then we go back down that way. And so that works really, really nicely. And it's just about keeping things organized within your media queries where you need them to be. There are ways of working without media queries with, uh, you might see it with like a repeat auto fit and other things like that that are actually fairly easy to use, but on a layout like this, it just, it doesn't work. And I don't want to dive into it because we're just adding we're keeping grid simple today. Hopefully this is still keeping it very simple for you. Uh, and moving things into the media query, hopefully doesn't throw you off too much there. But again, all of this code, if you want to look at it in more detail, the GitHub repo is linked below and you can access all the code there. Now, the last thing I want to talk about that I find actually simplifies things with grid a little bit. Uh, and it's a way that I used to not want to work at all, but I find when it comes to media queries and all of that, it makes grid just mm, wonderful. It does take a little bit more setup, but I find it's a nice, easy way to work with Grid when you have more complex layouts like this. In doing this, we're also going to explore a few other properties that we haven't looked at yet. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to come and I'm going to delete all of this. <laughs> I'm going to delete, uh, I'm going to leave the media query because we are going to need it, but I'm going to delete all of that. Uh, and we're left back where we started with our display grid at the very beginning. And this is just another approach. It's why I'm breaking it sort of into two, but it's one of my favorite ways to work with Grid. Uh, the way we just looked at, I think, is the best way to understand how grid is working and the simple ways of setting up a nice simple grid. This is when you need more complex layouts with a little bit more happening, where things change a little bit more. So we're going to break away from the actual design uh, as well a little bit with this one. And what I'm going to do is actually set up some grid template areas. And with grid template areas, the syntax of it's a little weird, but I always, always do it where I put it onto its own line because the grid template areas tend to get a little bit complex. And we're going to see that once we get to the media query, it's going to have a little bit more going. And it's also kind of weird because it does all go in strings. But I'm going to write one here. And then I'm actually going to go on a new line. And in quotations, it can be single or double quotations, three, four. 
and five. And I always forget my semicolon at the end, so just don't forget at the, <laughs> after the last one, you do need a semicolon. And let's hit save and let's see what that's actually done because this has done something even though we don't see a difference yet. And to be able to see it, once again, we'll open up our visualization tools on my grid. So we can open the grid here and I have line numbers enabled. So if you don't see the line, uh, line areas, my area names are enabled. So it's within the layout tab. This is in Chrome and in Firefox. Chrome, it's these little, little tabs that show up here, whereas in Firefox, they're really just in your face. So I like the in your face ones a little bit better. And we can see we have one, two, three, four, and five at the bottom. Now, what's the point of this? <laughs> Let's go down into my media query. And here we're gonna write testimonial grid. And we're gonna say grid template areas. And we're gonna redefine them. So let's come here and what we're gonna say is we're gonna have, we're gonna match the design for now. So it's a one, one and five, right? And let's go back into Figma. And so if you remember in the markup, this is one, this is number two, then this is number three, this is number four, and then this one is number five. And again, draw things. So we have five here and five here, four there, four here, Let's make that four all in white. And we have a one there and a one here. So we have area one, one, two, five. And then we come down to this next row, three, four, four, five. So I can write that. And I usually don't number it like this. I actually give them meaningful names. But um, so that was uh, three, four, five, uh, four, four, five, four, four, five. And that was one, one, wasn't one, one, five, one, one, two, five. There we go, two, five. And when we look at it here, what it did is it made one row for each of these. So every set of quotation marks is going to be a row. And so here we just had one by itself, two by itself, three by itself. That's exactly what we see right now. One, two, three, just like we have one, two, three, four, five here. Every set of quotation marks here is the row. And then within this row, I'm creating different columns. And for each one of these columns, I'm giving them a name. And so let's hit save and Look at that, some magic happened. But you'll notice it's not using the area as well. But here we can see I have one, one, two, five. Five continues down here, four goes across these two, and three is here. And we'll even notice it puts these like solid red lines around the areas to highlight where they are in the visualization tools. Whereas here, like between four and four, there's no solid red line. So it tries to help us show us where things are. So that just means we need to use these grid areas. And again, is this more set up? Yes, it definitely is more set up. And, but I just find it works so well once you've taken the time to do this. Um, I'm gonna use this because of the way the layout is with the nth child selector. A lot of the time I'm doing this on a component that has like, you know, it might be your name, your name, your role, a description and image. So you can choose those selectors that you've already made in those classes and be applying all of that to those. But what we'll do is we'll come here, we'll say, uh, and I'll set this up really fast. So we'll fast forward for a second. Okay, so I've set up my nth child selectors and each one is my testimony and child. So my first child, second child, third child, fourth child, and my fifth child. And then to place something on a grid area, you just wanna come in and say what grid area they should be living on. So my first one should be living on grid area one. And you'll notice here, it's not a, it's not in quotation marks. And this is something I think gets some people caught off guard here. They're using one, uh, here we're setting everything in like a string type of thing. It's in quotation marks here. You don't use quotation marks just to be aware of that. And then we can do a two and then we can use a three and we can put a four and then we can set a five here, hit save. And my layout comes together. There's one issue with it, but look at that. It's come together. And then we can shrink that down and it pops over and then comes back. And what I really like about grid areas is check this out. Let's take this guy, copy him and paste him. And maybe we do this at 30 rem instead. So we're gonna create two different ones and we can do one, one. Um, let's just do one, one. Then we'll do a two, five, a three, five, and then a four, five and hit save. And so now let's go all the way down. They all stack on top of each other, just like we had it. Then I come to here and I get my one, two, five, three, five, four, five. Doesn't really work with this layout, but you can see it's going. Or so maybe we do four, four then across the bottom and we get that, there we go. So we get this layout like that and then we get to a larger layout and then it goes that way. 
and you could just change the layout how you need to at different screen sizes so easily. And what I really love with this is I'm only worried about the parent. I don't have to do anything on the children. This is the children. I set the grid area they live on. I never have to worry about it again, which is just so magical. And for this to be working at this stage, all I've done is display grid, a gap, and a grid template areas. And then I'm just redefining the grid template areas for each one. And with the visualization and seeing, oh, I have a grid area here. I have the grid area here. I find this so easy and so simple to work this way. And I don't even need spans because I'm saying that my one, uh, let's go find them, my grid area one, you're, you're living on grid area one. And grid area one is going across two different columns. So it's going to span those two columns. It's wonderful. Now you might have noticed we ran into that issue I talked about when I deleted my display, when I deleted the grid template columns that I'd originally set up with that repeat syntax, where the columns are different sizes. This one's really small and then this one's bigger just because of the way the content is distributed and it's doing its automatic thing to make it work, which is cool. And maybe that's happy and maybe this is exactly what you need. But if you do want to ensure that you have columns that are always the same size, um, and you're not actually setting up any columns, we can do this in one spot and then never have to worry about it, which is coming here and saying grid auto columns. Because these columns are automatically being generated based on my grid template areas. So it's grid auto columns, and then you say what size you want them to be. And that means any automatically generated column, and you can do the same for rows, any auto automatically generated column will be one FR. So if I hit save, now each column is the same size. We get nice even columns and the layout becomes a little bit more balanced. And if you really like this grid template areas approach of working, but you want to see it with an example where I'm not using nth child and I'm actually doing it in a bit more realistic of a situation, perhaps uh, there's a video here for your viewing pleasure that you can check out where I dive a lot deeper into that. And with that, a really big thank you to all of my patrons for their monthly support. I can't do it without you guys. And until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.